Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pens and pencils, whatever you identify as these days, welcome or welcome back to JKWD Podcast, where we help you do better in your life. Kevin, how are you doing today? <laughs> today I'm a pencil. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing... I'm doing well, thanks. And I am an eraser. <laughs> ah. I'm doing good. Hanging out here in sunny Liverpool, New York. It's not so sunny. Uh, we've been having some thunderstorms the last couple of days. I guess that's kind of general. Uh, but uh, no, no trees have fallen down in the yard and stuff like that. So got no leaks. I'm healthy, hearts beating steady, eating regular, life is good. Awesome. I have no complaints, really. Good to hear. Good to hear. How about you? Well, we had a, yeah, a scary week. We um we went out to dinner to celebrate my wife's birthday. It's the first time we've been out since Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. Um, I sat on the patio at wow. one of our Sat on the patio at one of our favorite seafood places. We uh, we gorged on uh, on some snow crab and some rock crab and some mm. shrimp and some crawfish and some wow. sausage and and uh, our little girl tried to eat um, a big uh, bundle of crab legs like, like a like an ice cream cone. Um, <laughs> oh really? <laughs> and she. Um, she put down half an ear of corn all by herself. Wow! Um, but she got bit by something that night. You know, we also went out to the to the beach and mm-hmm. in the dark, and um, went out to the you know went out in the pier. There were some people doing some night fishing. Somebody caught a small shark. But they but the girl oh, bought, yeah yeah I mean small How big shark is a like, small shark like ten inches. Got it. Like, okay. Yeah, like small small. Um, but like nothing like. I think we're going to need a bigger boat. It just like hey, we're gonna, <laughs> it, it was. It was more like, hey, we're going to. I remember we're, that. We're going to cut this thing. Yeah, you know, we're we're going to set this thing free. But if you want to come look at a shark, come look at a shark. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So the girl got bit by something that night, and uh, and yeah, I mean, like we saw the, the little bite on her face. We're like, oh, that, that's too bad. And then Tuesday morning we woke up and her face looked like she'd gone four rounds with Layla Ali. Um, mm. And uh, and it was like, what the... So we called the doctor and they're like, oh yeah, um, that happens to kids. Yeah, They get bitten on the face. Um, their upper faces will swell up. Uh, if it doesn't, it doesn't get better in three, four days, come see us. And we're like, well, I can't bring you to the grocery store. People think I'm beating you up. So yeah. Really. Um, yeah. <laughs> Still can't bring her to the grocery store, but it's looking a lot better. <laughs> um, we should mention when we recorded last week's episode, um, yeah, the the hurricane path wasn't out, but um, to all the all the people affected by Hurricane Laura down in Louisiana this week, oof, or mm-hmm. I mean now, you know, when this comes out, it'll be a week and a half ago, but you know, hearts. Hearts, prayers, everything out to, uh, I mean, some of the pictures coming out of Lake Charles are just really scary. Mm. Um, so I blew the, hotel, the the roof off a casino, you know, taking out windows of, you know, like hotels that are supposed to be hurricane proof. Oh, wow. Um, it, it came ashore with 150 mile an hour wind. So, uh, wow. Yeah. So I think the, um, yeah, the storm itself was scary, but the aftermath that, you know, everybody's power out is going to take weeks to get to some people. So um, stay safe, stay healthy, get out of there. If you if you didn't evacuate and you have the opportunity to get out of there, do it because it's going to be a it's going to be a long haul down there, I think. Um, anyway. Good to know. We are brought to you today. By Kelvin's Vitamin K Daily. That's Vitamin K for Kelvin. <laughs> so 
philosophical supplements for your attitude health. Every morning, Monday through Friday, you wake up with a whole tray of awesome in your in your inbox. Okay, it's one email, but it's the only one you need to read before you get moving <laughs> in the day. <laughs> get four weeks free. Go to vitaminkdaily.com. Vitamin K Daily, all one word, no spaces or anything. Vitamin K Daily dot com for your four weeks free, and after that, twenty four ninety five a year. If it doesn't trip your trigger, that's a Kelvin phrase. Then uh, cancel before the four weeks are up, and you won't pay a dime. And uh, correct. There we go. Vitamin K Daily dot com so, for your four weeks. Yeah. Excuse me. Now we've been doing this. You've been you've been you've been on my list forever since since it yeah. started. I'm pretty sure. So, just out of curiosity, mm-hmm. well, you're still reading it, so that's a sign. But what uh, mm-hmm. what do you get out of uh, what, what do they really do for you on a daily on a daily kind of basis? Because you know, normally you read something for a while, and and um, then it's like, well, okay, well, we've heard all this before. And then you okay. it up well, and else, so. here is my um, too much information oversharing um, moment of the day. Okay. Okay. Um, I wake up and I grab my phone and I go to the toilet <laughs> and I sit there and I, I read my email while I do my thing. Mm-hmm. And the only two, you know, I'll, I'll delete the emails. I'm definitely not going to read. Um, you know, the, the stuff that might have come in from subscriptions or whatever, uh, or, you know, just spam. It's not really spam that, like, like I don't read my New York Times daily headlines. Right. Um, but, you know, like I signed up for them so I can log in on the site and that kind of thing. Um, but I read Vitamin K and I read Seth Godin's weekly or daily uh, email. Um, vitamin K gets your voice in my head while I'm on the toilet first thing in the morning. Um, sometimes before you've gone to bed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. right. Um, and uh, yeah, just um, just gives me a little. Um, hey, get off the toilet. Go do something with your day. Um, I may have to make that a standard line from now on. <laughs> oh, maybe not. Sometimes you ask a question. You don't, sometimes you ask a question you don't want to hear the answer to. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> there you go. Okay. All right. So um, no, that was a, that was, that was good. I'm just checking because I mean we have a lot of people who, you know. Uh, w- w- I'm okay if we, if we get a few thousand more, but um, who have been reading me religiously for the almost 11 years I've been writing it. So sometimes I just like, cause it's, cause I know you. So it's, it, it's not just, you're really picky <laughs> about what you read. So the fact that you can sit here, look me dead in my eyes and tell me you're still reading it. I know there's something there because you I've sent you other stuff that you just sent back to me and said, don't try that again. <laughs> you know. sure. So sometimes I just like to ask people, you know, what is it that, uh, that really keeps you, keeps you reading it, especially after this long, after this long. So, well, thank you very much for that. All right. So now do you, um, Alleviate that image of me on the toilet for our listeners. Let's uh, play the music. Welcome to the Josh and Kelvin World Domination Podcast, where we talk about better humanhood teach you how to dominate your world. You ready? Here we go. So Kevin, I want to talk to you about one aspect of the intensely positive universe. You do? That, that, 
um, we mention here occasionally, but we don't really get in depth about, and and that's that's coaching, because you are yes, a life coach. I am. Um, you have certifications in this area. Um, can you talk yeah. about? Uh, can you talk a little bit about what coaching is and how it differs from therapy, and then we'll um, jump off our conversation from there. Well, yeah, therapy. I'm not a therapist, so this is this is just what we're learning here. Therapy tends to go in the why we do something thing. You know, when you're when you're feeling bad, you know why. Why is it? What caused that thing? And they try to to diagnose you, get you get you over that, and um, you know rewire your brain and and that kind of thing. And and to be a to be a therapist, I mean, you need. I mean, that's serious degree work. That's psychology. That's all kinds of stuff. That's licenses. That's uh, all kinds of stuff. So you are, you know. A doctor, basically. Coaching isn't so much concerned with how you got there. Coaching is just concerned out about what you can do from where you are to move forward to where you want to go. The definition that we learned in school and that I, I read daily is coaching is a partnering with clients in a thought-provoking and creative process that inspires them to maximize their personal and professional potential. And they teach us all kinds of things of ways to getting you in touch with you. You know, a lot of us have rules and things that keep us, you know, we have beliefs and we, we have rules that keep us from moving forward. Mm -hmm. whether it's our capabilities, whether it's our worthiness, whether it's in any number of things, whether we think we don't have the skills. Coaching is designed to help you find out, number one, what it is you really want to be doing. And then we can examine the belief systems and structures that are preventing you from getting there. Because I think I've told you before, we've, we've discussed before that, you know, a lot of the beliefs that we have, we have no, we had no control over them coming into our brains. You know, kids see things, you know, as, as small children and beliefs are formed without words, really. Mm -hmm. And they carry those unless something happens, it causes them to... Uh, to question it, generally speaking, most three, four, five-year-olds aren't going to be questioning, gee, do I really believe this? Why, how is this affecting my life? But we'll carry that belief into adulthood where it is affecting our life, and we still haven't asked that question. So coaching is to help people figure out, uh, well, uh, we're talking specifically life coaching now versus executive coaching versus, all right. Right, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Where, where, you know, where you are, um, where you want to be and how to figure out how to transition between those, those two points. And that's, that's kind of what we do. Will you read that um, definition again quickly? Cause there's something I wanted to point out. To the end. Okay. A partnering with clients in a thought provoking and creative process that inspires them to maximize their personal and professional potential. So what I really like about that is that it is both level and profession neutral. Um, right. That it doesn't say, you know, when we think of coaches, you know, a lot of us go right to sports, right? Cause right. You know that, you know, from, from an early age, you know, we know that youth sports have coaches, that there are high school sports coaches, and that you know, we always see the coach on the field when we're watching mm -hmm. a, a sporting contest. Um, this isn't just about sports. It's about any profession. Um, and it's also level neutral. It, it doesn't matter where in your professional life or your personal life you are. Um, 
you can feel that you're at the top of the field, mm -hmm. um, but there's still a way to improve your game right. or you know, your, your standing wherever, wherever you are in whatever uh, particular area of life that you're using and coaching in. Yes, sir. Um, and that can pertain, of course, to sports. You know, I mean, the greats, LeBron James, the Michael Jordans still have coaches. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, at the peaks of their careers. Um, but, you know, this can be, you know, in your current job, it can be looking for a new job. It could be family. It could be relationships. It could be really just about anything. Really, and and I I need to point out that, um, and there are specialties within all of that. You know, life sure. coach. Well, just like it, just like any business. I mean, right. you get to you get you get to find your niche as a coach, and right. uh, you happen to be in in life coaching. But yeah, but I'm, the, I'm I'm more a generalist. I you know that whole life satisfaction thing in general um, is kind of where I am, and figuring out. Okay, what's, you know, what's motivating me? You know, my my personal motto is when you master your mindset, you master your life. So my coaching is aimed at figuring out your mindset, finding out if that mindset is supporting you and where you want to go. And if not, what has to happen to change that? Um, but I'm not the one that changes it for you. Right. And then also, you know, figuring out if where you say you want to go is actually where you want to go. Right. Right, that, that's an important piece of it. Very much so. Uh, you, you think about you know, kind of Maslow's early work in self-actualization. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he found, he found self-actualization not through um, getting people self-actualized, but um, by diagnosing people as already self-actualized. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, like, oh, oh these are the these are the happy people. Here's why they're happy. Right. Now let's go take those unhappy people and see if we can make them happy. Right. Um, and so, how um, how do you go about discovering uh, where people are? I mean, I know that I, I know that in the process, what what they do is they you know, they come to you and say, "Hey, I, I'm stuck," or something similar. Um, but where would you as a coach, um, start with, with somebody new, uh, and with a new client who wanted to get somewhere, uh, what would you find out from them? Well, first of all, I have a, I have a questionnaire. The first thing we do is I call it a, a, uh, a gold mining, G O A L mining, um, uh, platform. But basically, we find out, number one, who you are, what you think your problem is, which is not the proper words, uh, you know, what it is that you want fixed, because it's not general. It's not a, it can't be a general thing. There's got to be something specific, basically. And if you give us general stuff, then we figure out, well, okay, so what's most important first? What is it? Is it you, you want to feel better? You want to uh, uh, do specific things, you know, how do you feel about yourself? Uh, so we, we ask you where you are and then where it is you want to be and oftentimes on a scale of one to 10, you know, for instance, um, questions I sent out last week to, to vitamin K crowd, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how happy are you with your life? Right. Um, you're going to come up with a number for that. And then the question after that is, well, what would 10 look like for you? So now you're going to tell us about, you know, what, where does you really, really want to go? And then we're going to ask you, although it may not sound like that, like what's, what do you feel is stopping you from getting there kind of a thing. And through a series of, of questions like that, we find out where it is you want to go. And then once we get that whole kind of general idea process together, then we look to find out, okay, so what do you want to work on first? First of all, and, and when would you like to, you know, how, how, how far oh, you want to go with that? 
So, I mean, a lot of people, uh, mm -hmm. what I found is a lot of us, again, are using or back when some of those, those old rules that nobody really verbalized for us that were given to us by someone else. Like, oh, right. you're not supposed to feel that way. How, how does that work, really? You're not supposed to feel that way. Um, and then we, we kind of go from there. And those those rules can you know manifest as oh you know real men don't cry or uh, money is the root of all evil and, yeah yeah you know, like you could say you want to be rich but you're scared because you actually like grew up believing that rich people's rich people were going to hell yeah um, that kind of thing right with or without the eye of the needle with or without the eye of the needle <laughs> right and the camel yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't have access to a camel. Um, I could probably <laughs> find a needle laying around here, but I'm not going to attempt to get the camel through the eye uh, of the needle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, wow, Kelvin hit me with a, a preacher's kid hit me with a biblical reference. <laughs> hey, well, um, you know, those are rare. Those are rare. Remember those. They are rare. <laughs> <laughs> they are rare. Coming to the um, but, but by the same token, the belief established by that keeps a lot of people from success. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, especially the money thing. Um, hey, I had a question for you on the one to 10 scale. Mm -hmm. um, I have heard, uh, I believe Tim Ferriss wow. is the one who uses this trick, mm -hmm. um, who, who asks for feedback on a one to 10 scale, but, but he doesn't allow three or seven. He doesn't allow three or seven as answers oh, interesting. Um, because he feels that somebody who's moderately unhappy mm -hmm. will typically pick three okay. because it sounds not awful, but not good enough to be mediocre mm -hmm. um, or we'll pick, you know, or somebody who's moderately happy will pick seven mm -hmm. because Eight sounds pretty darn happy, and six sounds pretty darn mediocre. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, yeah, the idea being, if if you were gonna say you were a seven, are you on the are you on the are you on the almost there side? Are you on the eight side? Or are you on the really? I'm more of a six mm -hmm. <laughs> um, kind of thing. Just. You know, what are your thoughts on that? Do you, do you get a lot of threes and sevens when you ask people how they're doing? Um, that's a good question. Not, I mean, not specifically. People are all over the board. Okay. People are all right. over the board because typically people either love their lives or they hate them. But the thing is, if they give me that, then we're going to find out, well, what is it? Basically, the process you went through. What is it that makes it a three for you? What does that What does that really mean? Right. Uh, and and try to move that up. Um, and again, when we go past that as well, what would the other number look like? You know, how, you know. Let's say you're of this. What would that look like for you? And we have people. The thing is that we have to get people to tell us what's in their heads. And we're not. Um, there's there's no right or wrong. There's no. Oh well, that, no, that's not what you should have said. No, it's like this is this is where you are. This is what this is what we work with. You know. Yeah. Cool. So you know, coaching has been on my mind because Michael Lewis has a has an excellent podcast called Against the Rules, mm -hmm. and you know, his second season was about coaches, and yeah, you know, he didn't just talk about he didn't just talk about you know, sports coaches, though, though he definitely touched on that. He mm -hmm. talked about financial coaches and life coaches and death coaches. And mm -hmm. uh, he's like, coaching seems to give the coach an advantage. Um, so access to, to a coach uh, is, is privileged to some extent, right? Um, it's one thing if you're doing coach. like, it's one thing if you're doing like CYO sports, mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, as you kind of age into a professional life, then mm -hmm. your know, coaches start to cost money, <laughs> um, and yeah. you know, you know, you, you don't cost what Tony Robbins 
cost which don't cost nothing. Um, right. Right. So, so somebody somebody working minimum wage is probably going to hire you, but where they but you know at at your price point when somebody hires you, they're likely to get ahead um, by dint of having a coach. Um, yes. It it tips the hand. It's a it's a it's an advantage um, to to have a coach, I and mean, that's essentially what, yeah. what his second season was about. He you know he went through uh, right. I mean, and typically we help you we help you discover right. things you haven't you're not looking at. You know, it's it's all a process of discovery, and then okay, well now that you see this, because you may not have realized that the reason you're afraid of that thing over there is because it resembles something you saw when you were three, but in, in, in the, in the process of having those conversations, those stories will come out, those things will come out. And then we have to, I mean, again, we have a lot of, we have a lot of beliefs. Uh, Something I learned uh, really, you know, especially when I was dealing with the Silva system, which is uh, really awesome stuff. Um, they used to call it the silver mind control system. Uh, they don't call it silver mind control anymore. It's just a silver system because they help you look at life, be more meditative and stuff like that. But it's, you started about talking about whether something is true or not true, right? And there's a question that comes up. The thing that you just said that you have as a belief, right? Is that true for everybody? Or is that just true for you? Because if it's a rule then it would seem to apply to everyone, right? I can't get ahead because I'm whatever. But is that true for everybody? Do you know anyone who is in your circumstance, for instance, who has gotten ahead despite the thing that you say is keeping you down? Maybe, maybe not, you know? But but generally speaking, we can, since we can point around the world, uh, <laughs> And all kinds of people with all kinds of disabilities who have overcome everything. I look at people like Stephen uh, Hawking's, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. I mean, you would think if you looked at him that that's, that's just a bundle of mess. But to be you know, one of the most brilliant people on the planet. <laughs> I've met people right. who were who were aerospace engineers who had some m- imbalance in their system and they could not it, they had very difficult time talking or pointing but when you got to the knowledge inside their head you know the brain's working fine this delivery mechanism we have as a body is 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 hampering that information getting out of us but yet somewhere along the line they found a way to do it. Somebody saw that and they've become valuable assets or additions to, you know, somebody's company or, or something. So a lot of times, and you, you and I, we have, we have interviewed people. We've interviewed people like John Gordon who, Mm -hmm. and, and Mark Henson, Mark Henson, you know, your ordinary superpower, people who have abilities they don't realize they have, well, they don't think they're anything special yet in another circumstance, that's a superpower that some person or company can use to, to get ahead. So a lot of it is, it's vision. It's, it's how we see ourselves and whether or not we allow our, our, to allow us to see ourselves in a better light, regardless of which, which that light is, because sometimes we get convinced, well, you just ain't no dang good. And that's not true mm-hmm. in, in a majority of cases. But until you're willing to accept that maybe that view was not quite accurate, that you allow yourself to move past that point and be the person you're looking to be. And um, it makes me think of my friend, Ulf, uh, who is a professor um, at, at Syracuse University. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was born with without a left hand, mm-hmm. um, so he um, <laughs> he has over the over the years he he started eh, it never stopped him from playing hockey or you know doing some of the things he loves right. and 
um, you know, over the past several years, he's he's taken to um, he had an account for a while called Stuff I Do with One Hand, but it wasn't stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> and now he goes yeah. now he goes on TikTok and he and he does some of his stuff, and I, I see it when he shares it to Twitter because I just haven't figured out TikTok. But um, yeah, I kill. Yeah, like he'll put a lit candle on that on that stub and, and flip it, mm-hmm. and he'll, yeah. But he, um, he, in the past, he's taken you know, video of of himself golfing, even though that's usually a two handed thing, and mm-hmm. um, you know, flipping eggs, um, and yeah, you know, just doing stuff that um, people who lose a hand later in life, right. Um, feel limited by it. and then i look at you know you take him and and um and up that to um to kyle maynard um yeah or, or, or i, I know what you're going to show me in a second yeah yeah um yeah kyle maynard was born a a, a congenital quad amputee and went oh. on to um do a lot of stuff in wrestling and um mountain climbing Right. Um, and Nick Vujicic there, who um, is a he is a speaker with um, <laughs> he he does some he does some great stuff with uh, he he does <laughs> well, he does some great stuff with with drum machines and with falling on his face. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> absolutely. I got this book from him. It's this teeny book, "Living Above Your Circumstances," is the title of it. So. We can stick that in a podcast for. <laughs> yeah. So, at, at any rate, um, yeah. So, th- so it's like sometimes the problem is that the limiting you know, belief, right? Yeah. All right, li- yeah, lim- limiting beliefs, absolutely. Some, you know, people who earlier in life are trying to protect us from, like, as the old folks used to say. Uh, getting too big for our britches, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to understand. No, you ain't a scientist. Ain't nobody in your family been a scientist. I mean, you don't even. You don't even. I mean, no. I mean, just don't. Don't set yourself up for that kind of fall. And I'm reminded of pictures like Rain Man, <laughs> with uh, the. With, uh, uh, Dustin Hoffman, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dustin Hoffman and, and 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 Tom Cruise, which you just forget. Um, I know a number of people who have autism, and you would, well, I mean, we used to think that they weren't smart. I'm the, the people I know with autism are brilliant. They don't always get the information out just like we're looking to hear it. Like right. We've got a, we've got a gentleman in our Toastmasters club who. Um, has five high functioning autism and he is one of the most detailed people one of the most magnificent the the facts the imagination he has the stories he tells is like pretty much when he comes up to give a speech oh it's like oh joe's talking today no we we won't get best speaker today <laughs> because he, he's a magnificent speaker and uh, it's just a joy to listen to him so and then it's like how come man i wish i wish i could put together stories like this guy it's like wonderful so i've met some of those people and, I, and i'll give i'll give um i mean i'll give claim to having occasionally in the past underestimated someone who i didn't think had um the wherewithal to be like that. I, I met a young lady once who had, um, it wasn't polio. Um, uh, I can't even call the name of the, the ailment right now, but she was in a wheelchair. She had, um, you know, she didn't really have good motor control and stuff, but we had been talking on email over some things. And I had said to her one day, you know, we should get together for lunch or something. And she said, well, we could do that, but I have to have someone, uh, you know, come, you know, feed me and stuff like that. So, but I, I didn't know anything about her at the time. So when we, we finally did manage to get that lunch together and she brought um, her sister with her to, and so I'm looking at this person going, how, how are we going to have a conversation? 
but as it we'd already been having a conversation she'd mastered email and stuff i had there was no indication from the email that she was impaired in any way so when i met her it kind of took me back because i'm like i was expecting to see a different picture but in sitting there talking with her and listening with her i mean she she was brilliant and she was laughing at people who were saying things about her that she, they thought she couldn't understand and she would have some comments about them like you know they're a real idiot <laughs> <laughs> they don't think i can understand but at any rate um, I've met people who had disabilities and it's who did not let them stop them. You know, we just talked about that. And I've had other people who were absolutely brilliant and let almost everything stop them because of what's, bouncing, belief, yeah. what's bouncing around, what's bouncing around their heads. Yeah. So, and when you, when we help somebody get past that, it was awesome. So I, and that's the part of it. My my thing for starting in coaching in the first place and my kind of what I want to do in life is help people feel better about life and themselves. That's the reason I started coaching. That's the reason I started talking. That's the reason, the reason I read all the, the Tony Robbins books. And that's the reason I talk to people because if you, I learned about the self-image a long time ago. And when I learned about the self-image, it's like, oh, we just had to do something about this. And then I learned about it for me and I learned about it for other people. And that's, I mean, I was doing it for free. I decided to get a coaching certification so I could be a bigger, better help. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, kind of what I do. Um, so we'll have a link in the show notes. We can, we can, but um, can you point people if they want to um, without, without going to the site, without, you know, going through yeah, the show notes. Yeah, can, can my, you tell people my, where they can get started with you, you questionnaire? My my website is, uh, you know, that one. You know, intensitypositive.com. There will be a, there's a, a logo on there, um, a panel on there for coaching. When you click that coaching and go inside that one panel, there will be a, a gold diamond inside that says, Hey, you know, fill out this questionnaire and it will take you to a questionnaire to fill out. When you get done filling it out, you can send it to me and then I will review it and get back with you. See if we can work together. Awesome. awesome. Well, I hope that um, people are inspired to take their lives to the next level. And again, thank you for doing 222 <laughs> episodes with me so far. VitaminKDaily.com, get yourself four weeks free and then just $24.95 a year. JKWDPodcast.com for all the show notes, all the show notes, all the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. show notes and more at jkwdpodcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, and share with your friends, and we will see you next week. Bye! A Better Humanhood Production.